Did you know that three quarters of the people in the church today do not even understand what salvation is all about? Including some of the pastors. They don't even know what salvation is all about. They think that salvation is going to church. <laughs> and uh, most of the people in those churches, they're there because they feel guilty. Well, it's Sunday and uh, I can't just stay home. They feel guilty and they think that, uh, well, if, if God looks at me and finds me I'm home and I'm not at the church, well, he's going to punish me. People don't understand what salvation is all about. People are just going to church because, yeah, it's mandatory. Yeah, we have no need to be like this from ever since when you were young. Others, they are going so that they can go and get blessings. Others, they are going to look for husbands and wives. Uh, you know, others, they are going to have um, the pastor pray for them so that they can get out of their trouble and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, poverty. People are just going to church for many reasons. But uh, the real reason, only a few understand. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing. Salvation is not all these things that people think. One, salvation is not baptism. If you think that uh, by being baptized, you're saved because someone poured some water here, <laughs> you're saved. It's a waste of time. It's a lie. Just go back home and sleep because uh, salvation is not baptism. Salvation is not doing good, good things. Okay. There are those who think that because I've done this, I've done that, I've done that. I'm a good person. I help the poor. I help the needy. I give tithes and offerings. Well, uh, I think God is going to have mercy on me on that day and uh, he's going to let me in. But let me tell you, salvation is not all those things. It's all these things are good, but they cannot give you eternal life at the end of the day. Let me tell you, salvation is very simple. It's belief. <laughs> oh, what do you believe? Do you believe in God? Simple. That is salvation. But when I tell people about believing... Many will rise up and say, no, we have to do this, we have to do that. What do you have to do? If you need to do something, then Jesus died for nothing. He could just have sent a set of rules like he sent with Moses and said, okay, let people do this, 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 this. But even through the laws of Moses, nobody could be able to fulfill any law. That is why Jesus came here on earth and he did the whole work for us. So that now all that we need to do is just receive simple mathematics but then people don't understand this people think that as long as my pastor approves it is like is my god he approves and tells me yeah yeah you're good now i think god is fine with you and that's why people in africa they have been conned so much in these churches because they have removed their faith from god and put it in a man remember the bible says that there is now one mediator between man and god the man Jesus. Jesus is the only mediator. There is no other mediator. There is no other broker at the middle. So if you're going to a pastor so that you can reach God, then uh, you're going to be do uh, doomed and duped. He's going to steal from you. And churches have become the biggest businesses that we have here in Africa. It's, it's a big multi-million business. Why? Because people here here, they're, they're, they're not smart. People do not understand. And people don't read. They have the Bibles at home, but uh, they're just flowers. They do not understand what is in those books. So they want somebody always to interpret to them because they've never understood the truth. Now, let me tell you what salvation is all about. Let me stop yapping. The Bible tells us, and I'm going to give you this one even from the simplest of all books. Of all verses that you've ever heard. John 3.16. What, is, what did, does this verse say? This one, I'm sure everybody has heard it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Whosoever believes in him. Did the Bible say whosoever does something, whosoever goes to church, whosoever helps the poor, whosoever is baptized, whosoever does this and that? No, whosoever believes Okay? Believes in what? <laughs> you see, there's also another thing. Believing. Okay, believing in what? Believing in the Son of God who was sent by the Father. So what about Jesus do we have to believe? We have to believe in the work that he did. What did Jesus do? Okay, what kind of work did he do? 
We know that Jesus, when he came here, he lived a perfect life and he died. Okay? Remember, the wages of sin is death. So why did Jesus have to die then if he did not do any sin? He died for a cause. He died so that you can have his life and then he can have your death. And the only way that you can be saved is first accepting for sure, yeah, I'm a sinner. Because if you don't accept your situation, then how can you be saved if you cannot accept your own situation? You don't know if you're a sinner. You see people are walking up and down thinking that, oh, I'm not a sinner because I didn't kill anyone. <laughs> My friend, everybody is a sinner. The Bible says in the book of Romans 3 verse 23 that all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. So we have all sinned. Everybody has sinned. So if you first accept your sin situation, then now you ask yourself, so what am I supposed to do? What is the payment for a sinner? The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. Hmm. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So there is an option out. You know, if you're a sinner, you're supposed to die. But then there is an option out. The free gift which Jesus gave to us. He came, died for us so that you don't have to die. It's like he told you, get out from that cross. You're supposed to be dying there. But now get out. Let me die instead of you. That is salvation. And then once you hear this good news, that's, it's called good news or the gospel because there was bad news in the first place. And then you hear the good news. And after you hear the good news, then you have to understand why did Jesus have to die? Why did he have to shed his blood? The Bible says in the book of Hebrews 9.22, without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. So he had to shed his blood so that I can get forgiveness of sins. And why blood? Why blood? Why is the blood important? Leviticus 17.11 says, the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given you the blood upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that atones for the soul. So you see, the blood is very important. So when Jesus was pouring out his blood, he was pouring out his life so that you can receive it. How do you receive that life? By faith. How does faith come? Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. So the more you hear, the more faith comes in. And then now you have understood, you have, you have accepted you're a sinner. You have heard the gospel. You have understood the gospel. Now you believe from your heart. You believe from your heart. You see the Bible says in the book of Romans 10, 10, we believe from our hearts unto righteousness and we confess with our mouths and we get salvation. So believing is important. And you can only believe from your heart. Not from your mind. Because when you believe from your mind. You are just like a player. You don't really mean it. But something in your heart. You will never forget it. Alright. And then you confess. Confessing is just agreeing with God. And telling him. Okay God. You know what? I have agreed with you. That for sure. You sent your son to die for me at the cross. And now I believe. That is the simple gospel. Salvation. Salvation. So salvation is all about accepting you're a sinner, hearing the gospel, understanding the gospel, and believing and confessing to God what you believed. Confessing is, I've just agreed with you. And then Jesus becomes the Lord and Savior of your life. And you are saved. And then you come out from all these false things. False things that people are just sitting in a church and they don't even know salvation. How many know that is what salvation is all about? People are just sitting in church and saying, Oh, because I prayed that prayer, I think I'm going to heaven. That prayer cannot save you. Oh, repeat after me, repeat after me. No, it cannot save you. What saves you is the faith. Is the faith. It's just like when you know this is your mother. Who told you this is your mother? You had your faith. You had you are told, she told you, you read in maybe books or somewhere, or you watched photos, and you believe this is your mother with all, everything. Did you see yourself being born? No. How did you believe? Faith. So faith is everything. And that's why whosoever believes will not perish, but will have everlasting life.